Hi everybody, hope you're well. My name's Lawrence Mann and today we're going to draw a nose. Yep, that's it. You heard me right. A nose. Uh, I've done a couple of videos on drawing eyes before, but yeah, today we're going to draw a nose. We're also going to draw the eyes. I, I kind of lied to you when I just said a nose. <laughs> as you can see here, this is an overview of what we're going to be drawing. But yeah, I draw eyes as well. Because it's kind of hard to draw a nose without drawing eyes. I know that sounds really bizarre, but yeah. Where does the nose end and the rest of the face begin? Let's face it, it's it's kind of a tough one. I know plenty of people will have an opinion on it, but yeah. So let's get drawing. This is the Wacom Mobile Studio Pro. This is a 16 inch version. It's absolutely amazing. I love this tablet because it's one of the, it's pretty much the only mobile tablet created purely for artists. Um, and, and that really holds its own compared to a lot of other mobile devices that have styluses that we use. Um, I am using Sketchable as my application and I love that to bits. It's nice, it's really, really simple and I like the UI unlike a lot of other applications out there which, to be quite blunt, I think the UI stinks. So, this is the basics of it. This is obviously a tutorial for beginners but also for intermediates. I, When I started drawing as a kid I used to copy noses from paintings of Roman Greek origin. Uh, why? Because they, they had really expressive kind of noses and I love those. As I got older went to art college this is the technique that I kind of got for building noses. I don't tend to use it too much myself now, but I find it really works when I'm I'm showing somebody else how to draw a nose. And that's this kind of strange, bizarre U-shape with the triangles at the top. It's great because you can adapt it, change it. Um, it's quick to do, but once you've got it and it's roughly in place, you can decide whether you want to squeeze it and make it a bit thinner or a bit fatter or a bit longer. You've seen me just drawing it now and changing the shape up and now I'm happy with this overall shape I can kind of blend it in a bit and uh, change the bottom of it, change the top of it but it's that overall shape that I know now is right so I can go in with these other colours now and just draw the nose in and get it absolutely right so I've got my uh, septum there and my my overall nose shape, I don't know why I'm trying to try to blag that I know the anatomy of the nose. I'm no nose surgeon, that's true. But you only need a few colours when drawing something like this, at least to start with. And that's the background tone. You can just see I've set my background to be a nice generic skin tone. And here we go with a lighter colour. I've already used a darker colour and a darker mid-tone. So really yeah I've got what four colors on here and it's going kind of well and as it goes I can just up the uh, lightness or make it darker and I don't have to change too much you know but I can add in the areas where the eyes are going to be and so on and so on but what I'm gonna make right here is in terms of a nose I'm going to make kind of a, a more bulbous kind of uh, I wouldn't say caricature, but maybe maybe more of a, a midway nose. Not 100% realistic, but not fantasy either. Something you could go either way from. You know, if you're a manga fan, you could take this a bit further and draw something a bit more manga-esque. Or you could take it a bit more realistic if you wanted to. You know, this is a good midway point. What I will say is that never use pure white because you don't want a shiny nose. And never make the nose too dark because the darker you the darker colours you use on the nose, the bigger the nose looks. It's nice to stick with the mid-tones. If a nose is looking really wrong, you could scrub over the whole thing with a very light tone, a light opacity. And I found that really works to just knock it back. The nose, people don't tend to notice noses when looking at other people. So it's better not to use really light tones or dark tones. Like this now is looking quite nice. 
And it's, a, it's an obvious feature, but that's because it's the only feature on the page. For me, I would never put, never normally put a white streak just down the middle. I would put it off to one side. I am using symmetry in Sketchable to paint this, so I can paint it in half of the time. I normally make my noses a little more unsymmetrical. Just because your eye actually sees that as being more realistic. And it's nice to add in a little bit of extra colour, say a green or a blue as well. And it's nice to do that all over the face though, you don't want that just on the nose. But a nose is typically the tip of a nose, the bulb of the nose, is typically a little redder. Especially in, in say, comedy characters or alcoholic characters, you know. It depends, it depends on what kind of art you're doing, but yeah. So I, I'm moving on at the moment just to start the eyebrows. Because for me, um, this, this helps you kind of realise what kind of character you've got and how big your character is and how big the nose is. Eyebrows are a great extension of that. And this is why to me, I, I just wanted to do a nose video, how to draw a nose. but. Drawing eyebrows is a big part of drawing a nose. The amount of times I've drawn a nose, thought it was fine, and then drawn the eyebrows and been like, oh dear, that nose looks awful now. You can't judge something until you draw the rest of it. But I love drawing eyebrows because I'm a detail guy. And I love those single strokes of the hair. I'm, I'm not one of these guys who goes, boom, one brush, that's an eyebrow. Not unless it's, you know, it's a very small character in the background. If I'm drawing somebody, decent size I draw every every hair but I'm the same with drawing the freckles on the skin I, I like to of course I use a speckle brush or a spatter, spatter brush but then I will go in and, and draw individual freckles as well and so on and so forth the one thing I haven't really drawn on this yet is the philtrum the small divot under the nose that leads to the lip but I've drawn a shadow in its place that kind of suggests here you can see me drawing the eyes, and now that I've drawn those rough shapes, you can kind of see the the white sheen between the nose and the eyes. That stands out a little more now, and that really works. I drew that quite early on, but you didn't notice it before I put those eyes in there. So that to me is a big part of making a nose realistic. It's not just the nose itself, but it's that whole area that leads down from the nose into the cheeks and how the nose interacts with the eyes and so on. To me that's really important. It's not just the end of the nose and that's what most people tend to focus on. But for me I tend to spend more of my time, more of my time, most of my time, drawing that area in between the the eye and the nose. That to me is where all the nice nuance and detail is. Uh, if you're going to draw your eyes, you'll notice I'm... I like to say I've done a couple of videos on drawing eyes, but you'll notice the, the white that I've put in for the eyes is actually a uh, dark grey. And that's because, as far as I'm concerned, the tone of the eye, the white of the eye, should be the same tone as the skin surrounding it because your eyes are not luminescent they don't give off a brightness and it's the one thing you notice about um, a more amateur painter is that the eyes are too bright I might use a, a dab of white in the reflection but for something like this it's better just to uh, it's better just to stick with the same tone when using when, when just drawing the normal eyes in fact even if you want to go darker in most cases now I'm just giving blue eyes it's strange how I, I go for blue here because blue are actually I think green are the rarest eye colour I think green was the rarest eye colour but I, I tend to draw blue a lot I don't know why I have no reason as to why I draw blue but I think I, I tend to stay away from brown because I, I want something that jumps out a bit more 
My own eyes are kind of green, so I tend to stay away from that. It's really weird. Can't explain it. Now, these eyes aren't right at all, and this isn't a tutorial on... There you go, dab of white. And this isn't a tutorial on drawing eyes. But this is really just for the placement of the nose. If you want to go and see my tutorials on how to draw eyes, they will be there. But, like I say, this was just more a caricature version of how to draw the nose and eyes. But you can just take it further. If you wanted to make this a little more realistic, I'd probably say make the nose a little bit longer. And, you know, don't make it as bulbous on the end. But, I mean, that's easily changeable. I could even use free transform on this and fix it. Now you'll notice I'm drawing the eyelashes in now. Um, a lot of people don't like to individually draw them in but what you can also do is as I'm doing here now which is just to blend them in. And I think that equally works nicely. Just almost like a motion blur or a Gaussian blur or just a blur brush. It can work quite nicely. Now I'm adding sheen on here, but I'm doing this on a new layer, so if it looks overly dramatic then don't worry about it. What I might just do, I'm just trying to highlight all of the areas of the face just to, just to get some real definition in here. So don't worry about it ruining anything or stepping out of your comfort zone with doing something like this. I tend to do this on a lot of artwork. I'll do um, kind of a, a layer of white like this where I highlight all the weird stuff and then I'll do um, a layer where I go around and highlight all the darker edges that I want to highlight, all the little edges where shadows should be, for example. And I find sometimes that works really nicely. And you can see that barely made a difference, but at the same time, it, it's subtle enough when you turn that layer on and off, you suddenly notice, oh, that was worth doing. Like I said before, adding color can be... It's, it's nice because realistically what you want to do is you want to work in lots of different colors while you're working but it's incredibly time consuming and that's why it's nice to just turn on another layer near the end and just do that just dab a few different colors on change that layer to overlay color and then there you go you've added a few different colors you can turn on pinks greens purples blues and get some nice color emphasis in different areas of the face and here's my darker layer that I mentioned and also because it's just a segment of the face I can really add focus in on that as well and there we go that, that kind of looks nice I'm happy with that and here's the finished thing if you were just looking at it as an image let me know what you guys think hopefully check out some of my other videos and check out some of my tech reviews I'll see you guys later have a good one Well, thanks for watching. Be sure to comment, like, and even subscribe to my channel, Lawrence Can Draw. And if you really did like what you saw here, you can see more of it on my website, lawrenceman.co.uk. I'll see you next time.